Hello and welcome to another Yukon Q Center video. This video is part one of a set of four videos about geometric series. In this video, I'm going to start you from the ground up by explaining what exactly geometric series are. To help you understand what a geometric series is, let's take a look at this example. Notice what I did was I set up ratios between every pair of consecutive terms. When I simplify these ratios, every time I get the same number. This is exactly what a geometric series is. It's a series where all of the consecutive terms have the same ratio. Notice that I could rewrite this geometric series like this. And it's useful to write it this way because this makes it very clear what the common ratio 2 does to the series. 6 is just the previous term 3 multiplied by the common ratio 2. 12 is just the previous term 6 multiplied by the common ratio 2. And 24 is just the previous term 12 multiplied by the common ratio 2. I could also rewrite the series like this. And when I write it this way, notice that 3, the first term of the series, is now the leading coefficient of all of these terms. I can use the law of exponents to clean this up a little bit and get this. Now you might be wondering, what is the purpose of all this manipulation? The purpose is, all geometric series can be made to look like this. In general terms, an infinite geometric series, like the one we saw on the previous slide, is written either like this, or like this, with the first term a factored out. Similarly, a finite geometric series, meaning that it stops after a certain term, is written either like this, or like this, again, with a the first term being factored out. To help you remember that a stands for the first term in your series, think about it just like the alphabet. a is the first letter in the alphabet, it's also the first term in your geometric series. The R stands for the common ratio of your series. Think R for ratio. Notice that the example that we were looking at on the previous slide looks just like this general form here. If I wanted to, I could factor out the 3, the common term that's also the first term of the series, to make it look like the general factored form of an infinite geometric series. Because 3 is the first term of this series, what I say is a is equal to 3, and because the common ratio between the consecutive terms is 2, I say r is equal to 2. You can also write a geometric series more concisely by using sigma notation. An infinite geometric series is written one of these two ways, whereas a finite geometric series is written one of these two ways. If we look at this example here, notice that this form matches up with this form over here, where negative 4 is in the place of the a, and 1 over 7 is in place of the r. So I would say that my a is equal to negative 4, meaning the first term of this particular series is negative 4, and r is 1 over 7, meaning my common ratio between any two consecutive terms is 1 over 7. Now to help you see the connection between sigma notation form and sum of terms form, notice that if I took the first four terms of this series, and then I simplified it a little bit, this looks just like the general form of an infinite geometric series that you saw on the previous slide. Specifically, this looks just like a plus ar plus ar squared plus ar cubed dot dot dot. With negative 4 being the first term of the series and being a common factor in all of the terms, I could factor out the negative 4 and notice that when I write it this way, it looks just like the factored general form of an infinite geometric series. Specifically, I am talking about a times quantity 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed dot dot dot. To briefly summarize this video, a geometric series, by definition, is a series where all of the consecutive terms have the same ratio. Furthermore, any infinite geometric series could be written one of these four ways, whereas any finite geometric series could be written one of these four ways. Thank you for watching this video.